it's uh, not amusing, but you amusing because I talk about uh, a very famous Legendary Galaxy cartoon. You the picture, but I will talk about that for detail. You amusing means I'm using muse and ultra violet and not the amusing. Uh, what I will basically uh, give a very brief overview of what the work that we are, uh, uh, are doing to understand uh, uh, the Cartwheel galaxy as a whole, uh, not only the star formation in it, but uh, a pre collegial galaxy as well. So it is just a, a brief overview of our work. And uh, I hope uh, we could able to, uh, with, with, with all these recent interest uh, with JWST, we will have some more work uh, in the future and uh, we will be able to study uh, the origin, the star formation uh, histories of uh, uh, Cartwheel uh, in much better way. So, of course, uh, I want to start with this picture. This is appears, appeared a few months back. It is a very beautiful picture taken by JWST. And uh, uh, so, so just to introduce the cartwheel, it is 500 million light years away in the sculpture constellation, and it is considered the archetypical uh, of uh, of the class of the collisional uh, ring galaxies. And uh, there are several names given. One is the wheel of a wagon, and such galaxies uh, uh, they are the result of extreme event, a high speed collision between the large spiral galaxy and the spiral. Uh, small smaller galaxies and uh, <clears throat> actually uh, just such collisions can basically change the galaxy's shape and the structure quite considerably and uh, you see such a beautiful structure uh, this is what uh, actually written in the the press release note of uh, jwst web page that uh, uh, you see that uh, very uh, many individual blue uh, dots here uh, they are supposed to be the packet of uh, the current star formation. Uh, but uh, you also see many of other uh, uh, red dot, uh, dots, uh, and then it basically uh, quite well distinguished uh, the smooth distribution or the shape of the older stellar population and uh, the, the dense dust uh, in the core uh, that uh, uh, basically uh, is there because of uh, this. Uh, 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 the extreme collision event actually. And then there is another beautiful picture at the JWST uh, web page by the instrument uh, Mini. Uh, so so, uh, so what, what we see actually in the cartoon, uh, if you look at the either uh, a near time picture or a very picture, so it sports two rings, one bright inner ring and, uh, and the surrounding big uh, uh, colorful outer ring and uh, <clears throat> these rings are basically expand outwards from the center of the collisions uh, like a ripple in the pond after the stone is tossed into it. So it's, it's that kind of analogy uh, that is always used uh, uh, whenever we describe these kind of extreme collision event uh, in the case of uh, a cartwheel. Uh, so the bright center co uh, core actually cons uh, uh, contains a tremendous amount of hot dust uh, uh, and, and the such dust is often also visible in the HST image uh, that has been taken uh, uh, with uh, previously. Uh, and uh, it basically uh, are the home of uh, uh, the gigantic star formation uh, with the uh, presence of uh, many young clusters. Uh, and the outer ring is uh, basically which has expanded uh, uh, for about 400 million years are uh, dominated by the current star formation uh, and uh, and that is what uh, uh, has been uh, sorry i'll just skip that and i just want to show this uh, because such a, a level of star formation from the hst image is is not visible uh, because there is a lot of uh, dust here uh, but it is mostly visible in the in the outer uh, part of the the ring uh, and then this has uh, been a uh, 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 been uh, actually shown uh, in the Muse image. Uh, so this is what uh, uh, 
Uh, it is not the image, but this is basically uh, uh, a slice to a news data queue uh, that we have actually constructed using the H alpha and uh, nitrogen velocity structure. Uh, uh, and uh, the you can see actually a three bright shivers uh, in order uh, uh, the the nitrogen uh, two line at uh, sorry nitrogen two line at uh, six five four nine angstrom. The H alpha line at six uh, five six three angstrom, and the nitrogen two line at six five uh, eight five uh, uh, angstrom. So this uh, actually the the little uh, the small movie is showing uh, the the area of current star formation, uh, uh, and uh, it is basically then uh, required uh, uh, a kind of a uh, some kind of a triggering mechanism. So uh, what has been proposed is that uh, such triggers actually comes from an outwardly propagating density wave, uh, which uh, is set when uh, a compact galaxy plunges into a large gas rich uh, disk galaxy, uh, almost perpendicular to the disk uh, with a point of impact close to its center. So as waves move outwardly, it basically compresses the gas and triggers the star formation along the circular ring, uh, actually leaving behind uh, a kind of aging stellar population. So, so that is what uh, we are seeing in the in the current uh, in, in this uh, in this uh, movie from the Muse, and uh, and this is this is uh, this is the, the the movie about the uh, the current star formation, ongoing star formation that has been detected by the Muse, but. Uh, and there are the simulations which actually talk about the past star formation. So what, uh, let me try to see if I can play the movie. Oh. Okay. So I have converted my presentation from keynote to PowerPoint. Yeah. So the movie is not playing. Yeah. But uh, what it is basically shows is that uh, uh, it is it is basically a hydrodynamic hydrodynamical simulation by Adana, uh which actually uh, tries to explain the observed morphology and the star formation of the cartwheel-like galaxies. So what happens is that uh, the star forms in the expanding waves are carried uh, by the waves and is plunged through the outer disk material. So in the movie, you will see that it will slowly expand and it will basically the, the, the wave that will carry all the uh, all the stars that are formed uh, with, with the wave. Uh, as the ring hosts all the stars uh, that formed in this expanding wave in the post-collinear disk, and the spokes, uh, it will it will have the spokes, uh, and then spokes are the channel through which some of the stars uh, and the collected gas actually rinse back into the nucleus. So it, it first uh, actually expands outwards, and then some of the stars and the gas will again come back, uh, and uh, uh, and you will see uh, uh, some of these are nicely settled into the spokes. So under this uh, scenario, most of the star formation first occurs in the ring before this activity uh, is transformed into the spokes and then into the, the nucleus. So what happens is that I presented the two scenarios. Uh, one, uh, there was uh, the Muse image that has been predicted, uh, that has shown you the current star formation and the simulations that are basically predicting that there are not only the, the current star formation, but there are the episodes of star formation in the past, which uh, uh, which are basically presenting uh, a kind of a contradictory view. Uh, so uh, what we thought that the UV wavelength would be ideal uh, suited to press uh, these kind of uh, star formation that happened in the recent past, uh, past uh, without the contaminating effect uh, from a uh, let's say a pre-collinear old star set. Okay. Uh, I guess the resolution was much better in the case of Renault simulation compared to the other simulation in the past. Is that the case? Yeah, he's asking me. <laughs> yes, it is around uh, one parsec resolution. This I yeah. 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 So much of the simulations uh, that explain the current star formation have been done in the way past, say the nineties. Happened to be nineties, and then the, the this one is uh, is quite recent actually. 
So the center is a little offset. Yeah. So do any of the simulations show that? What that happens? And the simulation doesn't show the offset of the, the center actually. Yeah. So if uh, yeah, if you see the movie by Renault, it does not show the center. So I won't say the galaxy center is offset. Maybe the ring has the oh, offset from not, the, yeah, the galaxy. Yeah. Expanded yeah. Okay. So uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, that uh, uh, to understand the, the the formation and the evolution of the cartwheel, uh, we actually are having the uh, very detailed study uh, the analysis of the cartwheel galaxies. So so we have actually uh, uh, conducted this study in two parts. Uh, one is to understand the central region of the cartwheel to look for the pre collisional structure, uh, and uh, and uh, the uh, the second part is basically the tracing the location of the stellar population. Uh, uh, up to around few uh, hundred mega years of age to study the uh, the past uh, formation uh, in the Cartwheel galaxy. Okay. So uh, I will go through uh, briefly with with these two uh, topics in next uh, few slides. So uh, the, in this uh, image, actually, what I have shown is that this is the VLTKS band image uh, of the Cartwheel galaxy, and then I have taken uh, uh, I have zoomed uh, this central region. And I have shown you uh, here uh, uh, three images. So one is the uh, HST image in uh, 450 uh, filter. Uh, uh, this one is uh, 814 uh, uh, filter. These are both from HST. Uh, and this is from uh, the VLT case band image. So uh, Stuck uh, in 1996 speculated the presence of the faint bar inside the ring uh, along with a D-shaped uh, structure from the HST. Uh, but uh, uh, their data uh, have not conclusively confirmed the presence of the path. And this is because of the, the huge amount of the dust that is presented in these HST images, the optical HST images. Uh, also, uh, the, the numerical simulation from uh, Athensola uh, have actually shown that uh, such kind of an event where the intruder galaxy is falling into the path galaxies uh, expect bar to survive actually. So we have used uh, these two uh, actually clues uh, and then, then we uh, analyzed the, this case band image uh, from the VLT to find out if there are uh, any hint uh, of the presence of the bar in the central region so that we can actually speculate the, the nature of the pre-collisional cartwheel galaxy. So, so one method is to identify the bar is to fit the, the ellipses, uh, and uh, you look for the uh, the position angle and the ellipticity profile here, uh, and then uh, then uh, then try to identify where the, the the bar is. So, what happens is that when you fit the ellipses uh, to the bar, uh, your ellipticity will be continuously increasing. Uh, 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 as you go upwards uh, to the bar edges, but your position angle will remain more or less constant. So we have applied the method, uh, such method to uh, HST 450 band image, uh, 814 band image in the case band image. Uh, uh, of course, because there is a huge amount of dust present in the HST images, so you cannot get a very conclusive evidence uh, of uh, of this uh, method where it can reveal the presence of the bar. But KS, uh, uh, a K-band image uh, gives us the, the some uh, hint basically that uh, uh, such a kind of a trend is there and uh, there is a possibility of having the bar uh, in the central region of the galaxy. So, so we just wanted to confirm it and we actually fitted, uh, we have done the decomposition, uh, the image decomposition of the central region of the galaxy uh, using the the code GALFIT. Uh, and uh, what I have shown here is that uh, basically, again, a surface brightness profile. Uh, so dotted is the, the observed uh, surface brightness profile. Uh, and uh, then others are basically here, the model surface brightness profile. Uh, the red uh, dotted curve is uh, basically a, a model uh, that we have used to fit the bar. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, the blue one is for the, the disk, sorry, the, the bulge actually. Uh, uh, here, the actually the colors are uh, just, just reversed. Uh, so, so what uh, we have shown here in this image is that uh, a red one is basically uh, uh, a bulge and the blue one is the bar. Uh, and we also actually try to fit the, 
the nucleus. So in order to get the good fit, actually, we had to include a, a point source function. Uh, so which uh, uh, then, then actually we got a very uh, uh, kind of a, a, a decent fit uh, where uh, we were able to basically confirm that uh, the bar is actually uh, present in the center of the, the galaxy. So, so this is uh, this is the summary uh, of the. Uh, no. Well, not not. We don't have any conclusive evidence. Uh, evidence. Yeah. So BPT diagram completely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it doesn't say anything about the the, the ATN actually. Uh, I'm not taking care of the deal. Uh, it, Maybe it will get actually. No, it is at the moderate inclination. It does not have an edge on the surface on actually. So the inclination is around 55 per degree uh, or 60 degree for this galaxy. The tilt of what I. No, the, uh, it is on a plane and the face is on a plane. No, 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 it is, it is not. Uh, so it is tilted. No, it is not the face on actually. Ah, so that's why. Yeah, yeah. Right. See, generally what happens is that when you actually look for the bar, you need to deproject it actually. Okay. Ah. Now, the deprojection, you need to have a very good uh, inclination information, and that you can actually get from the disk. But what happens in the cartwheel case is that the disk is completely disturbed because of the collision. So it is very difficult to estimate the, the, uh, the inclination and hence you cannot deproject it actually. So that's why we have not used the deprojected uh, way to, to look for the, uh, the, the bar. Uh, so, so that is the, the way, uh, the, the constraint that we have actually. <clears throat> Okay, so so this is the summary. So basically, we could able to look for the pre-collisional nature of the the cartwheel galaxy, which has, could be a, a larger spiral galaxy with a, a bar, a pseudo bulge, and unresolved point source. Can be AGN, maybe the near infrared AGN. Yeah, from the near spec, we can try to see the the cartwheel galaxy have the spec data as well. So so that might uh, give us some hint about. Uh, the central uh, uh, source. So uh, we thought that uh, we will use the MUSE data to see whether there is a, a kind of a kinematical uh, signature of the bar as well. So we have used uh, the pipeline uh, GIST uh, to actually produce uh, uh, these kind of a maps. So this is a flux map, uh, line of sight velocity map, uh, velocity dispersion map, and uh, H3 and H4 uh, Gauss Hormite moment. Uh, and such kinematical information can be uh, used to basically trace the signature of the bar. So, so what we have done here is that we have plotted uh, uh, this profiles here on this diagram. So this is a flux profile, velocity profile, and the velocity dispersion profile. So we have taken the central region. Uh, we have placed the several slit here. Uh, and then we have basically calculated the average uh, flux inside each slit, and then using that we have actually plotted the, the these profiles. And uh, we actually looked at the simulations by Bureau and uh, Athens Sula, and uh, in their simulations for the, the disk galaxy, actually, uh, what they have done is that they have shown these profiles uh, uh, to actually detect the 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 kinematical signature of the bar. So an exponential inten intensity profile within the bar region uh, with a plate of outside. So, so these are basically uh, the lines here uh, at minus 20 and 20, they are the, the bar region. And within that, if there is an exponential rise in intensity profile, uh, if you see, uh, that is basically a one signature of the presence of the bar. And uh, something very similar, uh, uh, not similar, uh, but uh, uh, what they have said is that the line of sight velocity also shows a sharp rise within the bar region where the intensity is uh, increasing rapidly. Uh, so, so that is what uh, the very similar profile, what they have produced actually from the simulation we have seen here for the flux and velocity profile, but not so much for the, uh, for the, the velocity dispersion. And then uh, there is another, uh, um, uh, uh, this kind of a diagram uh, that has been uh, actually uh, given by them and used recently by uh, uh, these collaborations where they have actually used again uh, a kind of a, 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 
uh, edge on uh, galaxies to find uh, the bar in this thing uh, in, in uh, using the views data and they have plotted the uh, v by sigma versus uh, the h3 uh, uh, diagram and then if you see a, a correlation uh, between these two quantities at the, at the central region then then you basically say that it is uh, the bar is present there but uh, in our case uh, this this correlation is very weak again uh, these simulations have been done not for the the collinear galaxies, uh, but but for for a very normal uh, this galaxies, bar this galaxies. So we expect a such kind of a weak trend uh, because again the galaxy has gone through the collision. So so I would caution here uh, because we still uh, are uh, uh, working uh, and and uh, we we actually need to understand these results uh, 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 with with respect to the the simulations that we are comparing. Uh, so, so, so they are not yet uh, uh, well finalized from our side. Yeah. So, so these are basically uh, the kind of a central uh, uh, structure that that we thought uh, uh, the, that that we can study with the the cartwheel, and then basically uh, we observe the cartwheel using the UBIT, uh, and we thought that uh, as I said in the uh, in the in the sort of few slides back that the UV wavelengths are ideally suited to trace the star formation of the recent, uh, uh, that that happened in the recent past without the contaminating effect of the light from any uh, pre uh, collisional stars. And in, in that uh, in that idea in mind, and then uh, given that uh, high resolution, sorry, uh, a few images from the UVID with a point spread function of one point, roughly 1.5 half second, uh, which is equivalent to the 900 pass second the distance of cartwheel. Uh, uh, so, so which is a, a, a kind of a typical angular separation that we actually get for the star forming complexes in the cartwheel galaxy. So, so this was the ideally suited for our work. So, we have a very deep uh, uh, image for the cartwheel. It is approximately 13 kilosecond, and uh, and then that is what we have used to study in this study. Uh, and of course, we have the multiband data from HST, Muse, and VLT. So what we have done here is that we have identified the 73 sources in FUV images, with 60 of them uh, belonging to the outer ring uh, uh, or close to it. Rest of them are detected uh, along the spokes, and that is connected to the outer ring and the nucleus. Uh, so we have used the BPAS code, which actually calculates all the physical properties, not only for the single star evolution, but also for the evolution in the binary system uh, and uh, that is what we have used to basically generate uh, uh, to get the various uh, SSP models uh, and that is what uh, we have used uh, to uh, in, in our various uh, plots the color magnitude diagrams and the color color diagrams uh, so uh, what what I would do is that I would just uh, show you very quick uh, quick glimpses of that and you can see that here the various tracks of these uh, uh, models uh, 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 the blues are for the ring region, the reds are for the spoke region, and then the uh, the dotted one is basically for the the binary evolution tracks. Uh, the solid one is for the single evolution tracks, and uh, uh, we have applied these models to the color magnitude and color color diagrams. Uh, and then uh, I would actually show you the conclusion. Uh, we have also used the basically the the, the ages uh, uh, using the uh, uh, ages and relating uh, masses uh, using the best fit uh, uh, models that we have uh, and that is what uh, we see also here so what we see here is that if we estimate ages from the uv and h alpha uh, the the mean mass sorry uh, this is a mass diagram not the age diagram so if we actually calculate the the mass using the h alpha equivalent width and the uv we actually get the mean mass of the older population is around 10 to the power 7, which is 25 times larger than the mean mass of the, the younger population. So, so just to summarize uh, what I have uh, said here is that uh, we can get the, the star formation history in the recent past using the UV uh, sources. The UV sources in the ring region contains more than uh, one population of the stars. The bulk of the FUV emission comes from the non-ionizing non stars with the range of uh, ages from 20 to 150 million years. Uh, and we find that the older population is 25 times more massive than the population uh, producing uh, the ionization. So what we want to do is that we want to actually uh, extend the similar study to this uh, another famous ring galaxy AM6 
uh, actually it's 0641. Uh, and then we would like to compare what have, whatever we have seen in the cartwheel and what we can actually, uh, what, what we can uh, get from such analysis for this ring galaxies and then compare it with the simulations from the, uh, uh, that, that are there uh, about the current star formation, the star formation in the past. No, no, we are, we will finalize the paper soon. Thanks. Any questions? You showed that um, there is a nearby system. Is it anywhere related to that in terms of action? This one? Ah, so there is a uh, galaxy. Also. This one? Ah. I guess this is supposed to be the Jupiter galaxy. Ah, okay. So are you studying any of the uh, are you saying that also and comparing the deep ring structure? Uh, no, not for this work. Because if that is an included galaxy and uh, it's impacting with this system, there could be some similarities. Uh, could be, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess the, uh, we uh, yeah we haven't actually looked at uh, uh, this galaxy. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I, I, if I remember correctly, your new spring also has that. Yeah, the new spring mm -hmm. actually it's on the corner. Okay. Yeah, so it is very difficult to look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said there are some 50 star forming regions in the shell. Yeah. In the, the ring. Oh, in the ring, sorry. Yeah. So are they all in the coeval, I mean, similar rays? Uh, no, no, these are the FUV regions actually. So, so we you have the uh, the star forming regions uh, from the um, from the H alpha, which are uh, showing the pockets of the current star formation. Then these are the uh, the regions uh, that we identified from the FUV emission. So we think that uh, most of the regions uh, that we uh, see here are actually giving us the uh, the past uh, star formation history. And the ones in the spokes have uh, are the younger stars, I mean, does it fit in with the Reynolds model? No, these are the older stars, and that are exactly uh, going with the Reynolds model, actually, where these some of them actually come back to uh, the, the nucleus and uh, through the spokes, actually. Yeah. 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 This is kind of the right thing. So, uh, the audio correct you you actually say far you get affected by what I mean. So uh reddening uh, uh we have collected uh, I guess using uh, the Bama decrement in because we have the muse uh, data available. So you have special special sort reddening uh not yes, yeah, 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 for the, yeah. the second question if you have pass model, uh, how does the mass go can this show the plot like um yeah, so this is the yeah. one, this one, yeah, this one, so yeah. with respect to how do you flux, uh, what is the mass in here? This is integrated, uh, integrated uh, thing, right? So yeah, 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 these are all the integrated thing. yeah. Okay. So we covered the mass from, uh, I guess, uh, 4 million years to roughly 300 million years. So, yes. age, so sorry, sorry, age. Okay. The mass is not the ma mass actually, they, they show the two actually. Two, two. One is 10 to the power 6 year and one is 10 to the power 7 year. So, solar mass. Yeah, it's our solar mass. Okay. Okay. So, that's why the age is on the strategy of the 4 million Sorry? So, that the age is uh, from 4 million years to 10 million years. Yeah. So mass, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so that is what uh, the kind of. Uh, uh, that, uh, a population we get here, and some of these are basically you see here. It is it basically uh, maybe uh, uh, I guess I, I have mentioned here is that uh, uh, somewhere that uh, it's basically being redder than the, this population. Uh, I guess because uh, they're much more redder, so that's why uh, you get some of these things here in FUV. Uh, and the optical diagram actually. Yeah, you can see, you can't say much about the sizes of these systems, right? Because they are actually, the resolution itself is taking to what the person so Yeah, yeah, so these are, uh, we Complexes. have, yeah, 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 sizes are, because we have used the uniform aperture everywhere actually, so we haven't uh, worried about the size. Okay, last question. Uh, so is there a variation in the complexes like size, calculation over the range? 
This is the bottom. There of should be, but uh, uh, the way that we have estimated the flux is that we have actually taken the the single aperture actually all over the, the region. Uh, so so we haven't worried about the, the variation of the size and uh, uh, along the the range. Okay. So all the photometry, flux calculation, everything has been done using a, a single size aperture uh, okay, along so, the range. Uh, but, uh, so, but you extracted the different complexes, without? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so their sizes, uh, do they show variation? Uh, it is actually uh, very difficult because uh, you see a lot of uh, again uh, background information. So that these complexes okay. are actually embedded in the the, the emission uh, from comes from the other part of the ring as well. Okay. So isolating them and uh, I I guess uh, estimating the size would be very difficult. Uh, so so that's why we have used the common aperture to estimate everything. Okay. okay. Long live. India and France friendship.